and welcome back to the Life at Disney podcast. Here, we pull back the curtain and give you a peek into all things working at the Walt Disney Company. I'm your host, Natalie. From shipboard to shoreside, in this episode of the Life at Disney podcast, we're taking you on an in-depth look behind the scenes of our Disney Cruise Line operations. Our first guest, Caroline, is a manager of guest services aboard the Disney Wish, ensuring a seamless guest and crew experience from facilitating port clearances to creating magical moments worldwide. Caroline, what a pleasure and an honor it is speaking with you today. I'm very glad to be here with you today, Natalie, and thank you for inviting me. You know what? I'm so excited. This is such a special podcast for me because we know each other. We work together on board. It's a come full circle moment right here. And it's uh, very exciting to be here with you, Natalie. I love it. And I tell you what, it's one of the wonderful things about working at Disney Cruise Line. You truly do make friends for life and you become such a family on board. And I love it. But Caroline, I'd love to start out by taking it right back to the beginning. Tell me about how your career got started, not just with Disney Cruise Line, but just in general, following maybe your studies. So after I had studied, I was unsure kind of what I really wanted to do. I decided it was time for me to take a year off and travel the world. And that's kind of how I stumbled upon Disney Cruise Line. I thought it was going to be like many others, a a one year thing where I could work, travel, make money and meet some friends, hopefully from around the world. Little did I know that this was going to be the start of an incredible 12 year career. I started with Disney Cruise Line in the entertainment department where I was a youth activities counselor. With that, I did get to see the storytelling that Disney does have and really see the enchantment and the the wow and the awe that gets brought to our children's eyes. So seeing that inspiration of what we do on board on a daily basis was something very new to me. Once I did see that, I realized that I did want to bring the magic to Disney to our guests of all ages. So my natural career path obviously brought me to guest services host. Once I got into the guest services host, I was able to see that magic through the eyes of our guests of and family of all ages, which was pretty cool. When I got into the leadership position, so that's where my journey and my career kind of changed. I realized that what I wanted to do was to nurture and to develop the leaders of the future. I think that with our company, as we grow and as we continue to expand, the most important thing that we do have is being able to nurture the development of the leaders of the future. It really is such a privilege. And I have to say a massive congratulations on your career thus far with Disney Cruise Line. It is so impressive. You mentioned about starting out in youth activities. So can you tell me a little bit about what you did before you joined Disney Cruise Line that gave you the experience you needed to be able to be successful in coming into that department on board? So um, prior to coming on board, I did work with uh, different childcare facilities, which gave me the experience to come on board and uh, work with different age groups within the sector of the youth activities team. Um, But I think the most important thing that kind of prepared me for the role was once I did come on board was the training, the immersive training for our new talent that Disney does have, along with its continuous training for both the crew and the leaders, which makes us who we are. Absolutely. And there's so much training because when you come on board, you don't just come on to become part of the entertainment team or part of the hotel team. You're also a seafarer in the maritime industry. So I'm right in saying there's a lot of safety trainings and HR trainings that you have to do even today after 12 years with the company, right? I think that that was the most overwhelming part and the hardest transition for me. Because usually when you do start a new job, you just have to learn the technical skills of that new job. However, with this, there's so much that goes into it and we do need to support each other in such a different way because we are our own little floating community. So to understand the safety aspect, to understand the diverse and rich culture of Disney along with your actual job role, I think that for me was the the thing that overwhelmed me the most when I first started. Yeah, I would agree with that. It can be very overwhelming. So it's so important, especially for our new hires to just take each day as it comes and know that you're going to know more today than you did yesterday, less than tomorrow. Um, But it's a learning curve, which is amazing. Exactly. Yeah. And over time, it just becomes second nature. (laughs) 100%. Caroline, you mentioned about having the ability to start out in youth activities, but then transition into our guest services team. So that's great to know that obviously you went from being as part of the entertainment team to the hotel operations. Tell me a little bit about how you managed to do that. 
So I think one of the best things about Disney Cruise Line is you're not limited. They want you to continue to push the boundaries. You have the opportunities to do whatever you want to do while you're on board. So we have this program called Career Navigation. Um, and what you can do is you can sign up, you can learn about different job roles, and then you can apply to to try different avenues and areas in which you weren't sure they were the career path that you wanted, but you have the ability to continuously grow, push yourself and try new things. I think that's such a great opportunity to be able to do that. And as you say, continue to build your career and enhance your skill set, which is incredible. And from that, you've now had the chance to develop into leadership on board, which is amazing. Tell me a little bit about how you've managed to do that and you know, maybe your leaders that have supported you with your growth and promotion opportunities as well. Once I came into the guest services role, they have many different avenues in which you can explore. So I've been very fortunate. I've done about 10 different positions while on board uh, Disney Cruise Line. So as I came from a youth activities counselor, I moved over to guest services host. Once I was in the guest services team, I started to develop those those skills and I was provided the guidance from my different leaders in order to be able to provide that Disney world renowned service in which we know. From there, I started doing the HR leadership classes along with the interdepartmental leadership courses that we do have in order to develop those leadership skills. From there, I did different leadership positions that eventually led me to where I am today. (laughs) Obviously, life at sea, we know we've lived it for many years. It's such an amazing experience. But it's not always easy. And I would say, especially for you being in guest services, it can be very tough some days. Can you tell me some of the challenges that you face on a day-to-day basis and maybe how you overcome them? I think the biggest one that we we do face is the, the forever changing dynamics of our guests and crew. So their expectations become different. They are constantly evolving. And it's how do we think outside the box and in the end, work together and collaborate in order to provide a better service on a daily basis. And I think that would be the biggest thing is making sure that we're working together, using each other's different backgrounds, different knowledges in order to provide a better service. Because at the end of the day, two heads is better than one, right? Yeah, absolutely. You've been with the company now for 12 years, as you said. So there's got to be a reason that's kept you coming back. What is it that has had you stay with Disney Cruise Line for this amazing longevity of time for me to work for disney i think that you always hear the disney difference and for me the biggest thing was learning that that disney difference expands beyond just our guests and it really touches with the crew as well they're very focused on the well-being of the crew how we're treated and they're constantly looking at new ways to provide better services for us but as well as the long-lasting friendships like as you know these friendships expand beyond the seas. You work together in an environment and you go through this experience that is like no other, that most people don't understand unless you live and breathe it every day. And those friendships that you create, they become family. They're forever lasting. And I think that would be what it is. It's the integrity of the company. It's their morals, their values. And they're not just words that they say, they live and breathe them every single day. Every single person on board truly believes in them and exhibits these qualities each day. And I think it's something very special that you don't necessarily see in every other company. It's an environment unlike anything else, that's for sure. And you mentioned there about crew welfare. Crew welfare is huge for us on board. You know, you're working away from home. You're, you know, working seven days a week for, you know, up to sometimes six to eight months at a time. Talk to me about some of the benefits about living out at sea and some of the wonderful things that we have available for our crew when they work on board as well. First of all, the the biggest appeal when you first start is the travel, especially with us expanding to to new horizons. You get to see places that you'd never get to see if not for Disney Cruise Line. But so we have the travel aspect. They're always looking at different ways to improve the life on board for crew, you know? So one of the big things was if you are in one of those crew positions, making sure that the crew areas are as nice as they can be to make sure that we have benefits, healthcare. These are all different things that are are huge things that sets us apart from other companies. They, they're really focused on the well-being. They love to have our feedback about what we want or what we would like to see. And they try and implement those as best as possible. 
That's great. And are there wonderful crew spaces on board as well for, you know, you to use in your off time? Absolutely. So they have different lounges available for the crew. We, especially on the Disney Wish, we have little karaoke areas, you have crew pools, you have the crew beach in Castaway Key. They have some a, a really amazing, incredible spaces that let you on your off time feel like you're a guest as well. And you're on board the Disney Wish right now, correct? Yes, I just got over here. Amazing. Our newest ship within our fleet right now, soon to change. Um, But uh, have you had the chance to work on many of our different ships throughout your career? I've been very fortunate. I've been able to be on every single ship that we do have on board. And it's very difficult to choose which one or to say, oh, this is my favorite, because it's like choosing a favorite child. You know, each one is unique. But at the end of the day, it's the crew that become family that really make each each ship special and I think you feel that when you walk on board as either a guest or as a a new crew member. So there's never a chance to get complacent because different ships bring you know different experiences. Different challenges. (laughs) Indeed. Um, You mentioned one of the highlights of working on board is the travel aspect. Of course some amazing destinations that Disney Cruise Line now Mm -hmm. visit around the globe. Tell me about some of those different places that you've had the great opportunity to go visit. I think for me, the biggest thing was being able to to spend as much time in Europe. I, you know, when I first started, I I did join the Disney Magic, and we were in the European season, so I got to really get to see some places that I had never been before. You wake up every morning in a different country, go to bed in a different place, seeing the the Northern Lights in Alaska. That's something that not everybody can say that they've seen or done. It's breathtaking. And to go and say that I've done it with work as well, I think is uh, something unbelievable. These are once in a lifetime experiences. You know, some people never get the chance to do this and you're getting the chance to do that and getting paid to do it as well, which is incredible. And while you do go out in port, do you get the chance to try any of the port adventures on offer as well? Absolutely. So they really do focus on what they can bring to cruise. So we have different crew port adventures as well. So you can sign up and do those. In my department, we're very fortunate because we pair very closely with the Port Adventures team. So sometimes we're sent to go do audits. So you're seeing these breathtaking areas. You're going on these Port Adventures that you may not be able to experience without this. And to be able to say you're doing it and this is a part of your daily job. It's truly incredible. I mean, that's really hard, right? You have to go and audit Port Adventures (laughs) just to make sure that you know that you're providing the right information for your guests. Talk about a tough day of work. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. Obviously, now is such an amazing time for Disney Cruise Line. If we've got anybody out there that's thinking about a career with Disney Cruise Line, you know, whether it's within guest services, youth activities, maybe even as part of our MTO, our Marine and Technical Operations on board, what kind of advice would you give to anybody out there that's going, ah, is ship life really for me? I think the biggest thing would be to be patient, to learn from your mistakes, Take every opportunity that is presented to you, trust the journey, don't rush the process, and just most importantly, laugh and have fun. I think those would be the key things that are, especially for our company, it's it's about fun, you know, enjoy the process and enjoy the journey because this company has great value and it changes who you are as a person and your way of thinking, your outlook on life. And it, to say that you're a part of something as special as Disney is incredible. I think every single person, no matter where you're from in the world, has a Disney memory, whether it be grand or small in comparison. But for a place to have a special part in each person's life and now to be able to create that magic for others is something like no other. Yeah, beautifully said there, Caroline. Thank you. Is there something that when you started out, you wish you had known about working on board that maybe you would like to give advice to somebody else that's looking to join, maybe that you didn't know? I think it's a constant uh, change of itineraries, the working hours, and that you need to be flexible and you need to be able to think on your feet and enjoy the process as it comes. Because if you try and plan too much, it's never going to go the way that you want. (laughs) If you're flexible, and adaptable, then honestly, this is this is definitely a wonderful environment to be in. Out of your time working on board, whether in youth activities or guest services, share with me one of your favorite memories that you've had out at sea. I think at first, uh, when I first joined, 
it was, I was here for the travel. Over time, my favorite memories go down to the moments I've spent with my colleagues, with my friends, and just the laughs and unforgettable memories. It's funny, looking back now, since I, I've been with the company for about 12 years now, but you see your friends grow, you see your friends develop, and you see us all moved on and achieve things that we never thought we would. So it's celebrating the wins with your friends and having these memories of where we were when we were just young, you know, and we didn't know what was to come and to see how we've all evolved, but evolved together with one common goal. So I wouldn't say it's specific, it's, it's celebrating the, the successes of you and your friends together. I would agree with that one. It's so nice when you see your friends flourishing and excelling in what they're doing and enjoying it at the same time as well, which is incredible. We spoke about obviously the growth of the company and one thing we didn't even speak about, which is part of Disney Cruise Line is our beautiful island destinations in the Bahamas. Um, you've had the chance to work out on Castaway Key. Have you had the chance to mm -hmm. go to Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point yet? I have not, but I've heard wonderful things about it. I heard it's, uh, you know, already Castaway. I always say, you see these photos of Castaway, you see the blue water, you see how stunning it is in photos, and you think that there's, they've been edited or they've been photoshopped. But when I tell you the first time you arrive and you realize that the photos don't do this island justice is incredible. I think the nicest thing about these two islands is that you get the same service in which you expect at Disney. So as a crew member, when you dock at these islands, you actually go and work out on the island as well. Yes, <laughs> we do multiple different jobs outside as well. So depending on where you are, the cooks will, are the ones still cooking the food for the guests. Their dining room servers are still there connecting. Our entertainment teams are providing all the entertainment on the island. So you get a, a little bit of us in, in our island wear. You get to see the characters in the beach wear, which who doesn't like to see Daisy and Minnie in their little outfits, you know? <laughs> so it's a... Uh, it's something really special. You get the enjoyment of the ship in a different location and on a breathtaking island. I will say, you know, it really is such an extension of the shipboard operations. It's it's just like we're taking everything out there. So when the ship docks in the morning, you know, the crew are the first ones off, getting the island all ready. Uh, and then shortly afterwards, our guests are all going ashore and have an amazing time. Exactly. And that it, that's exactly it. It's just an extension of the ship. You get the, the same fun atmosphere, the same familiar faces, and just, like I said, in a breathtaking new environment. Incredible. You know, Caroline, you've had such a, an incredible career with Disney Cruise Line on board, um, you know, working in multiple different positions, different departments. You really could work for any company out there. So why Disney? I think it goes back again to their rich heritage their strong values and these are instilled in every single person but we truly live breathe and believe them i think they're not just words that are being said and how well they take care of us how much they want us to grow how much they want us to push the boundaries they're innovative thinkers and they thrive and they push for community for goals for growth as well you know both growth as individuals but growth as a collective. And I think that that's very hard to find. Indeed, indeed. And even though you are a part of guest services within the hotel operations, do you still liaise very closely with other teams on board? On board, we would not be able to function without each other. On board, we rely on one another for everything, you know, whether it be your day-to-day -day job, whether it be the safety. We have to communicate and collaborate with one another through our everyday, whether it be MTO, entertainment, or hotel, we all need to work together for our one common goal. The shipboard operation would not be able to function without one of those key core pieces. And I think that's one of the reasons as well that our guests continue to come back and sail with us time and time again. Do you see it on board? Do you see a lot of our repeat guests, our gold, our platinum, our pearl members sailing with us? You know, it's so incredible to be able to meet these guests, connect with them, and then years later, they come back and they're able to share different stories. And it's like having an extended family come back on board. These guests, they spend so much time with us. They 
we see them through the years. They see us through our career progression as well. So we're celebrating their their family wins, their growth, and they're also celebrating ours. It's it's a nice way to have family without having family on board. Absolutely. We mentioned obviously about the growth of the company. Um, I have to ask, what are you excited for in the future? Is there one thing that's come in that you are super excited about with Disney Cruise Line? To be honest with you, I think it's just a continued growth. I think it gives all of our talented crew and leaders lots of opportunities for career and personal growth, but also going to new horizons. You know, last winter we went to Australia. We're bringing the immersive Disney experiences to shorelines or to places that might not necessarily be able to have this experience without us going to these areas. So I think it's an exciting time. I think that we're able to connect with more families and different dynamics, but it's also a great time for for growth. And I don't think it's stopping anytime soon. I would agree. I I think it's amazing to see how this company has grown in a fairly short period of time. You know, just, just over 25 years we've been in business. And when we started, we were doing three and four day cruises. That was it. It was set in stone. And now we're doing transatlantic, transpacific voyages. We're heading on over to Asia now for the very first time next year. I mean, it's just incredible what this company has on offer. I think it, it just goes to show that we never stop reevaluating. We never stop trying to push the limits and push the boundaries and see how we can get this amazing product that we thought was only going to be, like you said, three and four day cruises and seeing how much further we can push ourselves and what we can do to change and evolve as well. Well, I tell you what, Caroline, it's been such a joy speaking with you today. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit about your career, how you got started, what's kept you coming back. Um, I think it's it's so nice to hear from those that are living and breathing it um, because ship life isn't for everybody. But if, if you are thinking about it, I think you and I can both agree it's probably been the best decision we ever made was to go take our careers out at sea. It's not an easy life at all, but I think it's one of the most rewarding, you know, what you have to overcome in a day and how much you change, how much you grow and evolve as a person. The person I am today is completely different than the person I started and I've changed for the better. I think working on ships, it's it's an experience like no other. And unless you've done it, you you can't explain it to anybody else. Absolutely. Well, before we finish, um, something that I do like to do during our podcast is what I like to call my Fab Five favorites. You did take away one of my questions, actually, because I was going to ask you what your favorite ship was, but you told me you can't choose because it's like choosing your favorite child. (laughs) It's true, though. (laughs) You know just as well as I do. It's the people that make the experience. Indeed. And every ship has its own unique character and experience. So... You can't compare any of them. Exactly. Okay, well, let's get started with question number one. Very simple, favorite Disney character. Ursula. Ursula. I love that. Tell me a little bit more about that one, Caroline. I just think she's so funny. She's so dramatic and she's just a little extra. And I think it's hilarious to watch her. (laughs) I love that. I love that. And you've got the Little Mermaid over on the wish right now as one of your main shows. Okay, question number two. Favorite Disney movie. So as a child, my favorite Disney movie was Beauty and the Beast, hands down. Nice. Good choices there. I like it. Very nice. Okay. Question number three. Do you have a favorite Disney song? Probably depending on the day, but I find Moana and the new Wish soundtrack extremely catchy. Indeed. Okay, here we go. Number four. Favorite port of call. Now this is going to be a tough one. Ketchikan. Nice. Yeah. Any particular reason? And of course, Ketchikan is over in Alaska for anybody that's not aware as well. I think for me, it was, I think any of the Alaskan ports. As As a kid, there was one movie that I watched about Alaska and I always wanted to go. And then finally getting the opportunity to go and see it. And I would say any of the Alaskan ports, actually, I take it back, any of the Alaskan ports, the beauty, the scenery, the... It, even when you're docked and you you see it's salmon rush and you see the bears and the fish jumping, it's it's incredible. Any Alaskan port. Ketchikan, though, is very nice. Even though it's very rainy, even on a rainy day, yeah. it's some of the best days you're ever going to have. So my fifth and final question, it's very much Disney Cruise Line ship based. Do you have a favorite show that we have on board our ships? Dreams. Hands down. 
I think it yeah. was a, the first show I saw. That feeling when you start to see the show and as it develops and the goosebumps that you get, the the cast was incredible, but the the story of it. And it just it just really brings the magic to Disney to life. And to see it in a, an original Broadway style show, you know, it was, uh, that one touched me. And since day one, that has always been my favorite. I would agree with you. Sensational show. So Disney Dreams, an enchanted classic. It's our signature show on the Disney magic and the Disney wonder. Um, and just yeah. breathtaking. It is the embodiment of Disney. For me, you know, all of our shows are incredible, but I think that because it was the first one that I saw, it, for me, it brought what I love about Disney to life. Yeah, Touch, touches the hearts of everybody. Oh, absolutely. Well, Caroline, this really has been such an honor. I know you're an extremely busy lady out there on board. I know you've got a full day ahead of you right now. So thank you so much for your time. Have an amazing day. Enjoy the rest of your contract and your well-deserved vacation. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Thank you so much, Natalie. And again, it's so nice to see you. Well, you just heard from Caroline, manager of guest services. And our next guest, Dave, is a manager of nautical operations Shoreside in Celebration, Florida. As manager of nautical operations, Dave oversees the daily operations of our fleet of ships as a shore contact for the teams on board, triple checking ship routes and itineraries, answering any questions or concerns from crew and ensuring each ship is set up for success. So welcome, Dave. Of course, I'm more than happy to be here. Manager of Nautical Operations. I mean, if you're going to work for Disney Cruise Line, that's the title that you kind of want to have, right? It just, it says it all. It's brilliant. It says it all. And it, it, it's not focused on one thing. It is so broad. We do so many things here that it's the perfect title to have. <laughs> Absolutely. So with that, tell us a little bit about your kind of day-to-day -day duties, responsibilities, kind of really what you oversee at Disney Cruise Line. So I, I get a question a lot. What do you actually do? And I sort of always joke, oh, you know, we just keep the ships afloat. That's really what we do. And I do say we a lot because I'm not just here by myself, right? We're a team. Uh, we have nautical managers. We have the senior manager of, of marine operations and fleet training. So it's not just myself. One of the major things we do here is we review the routes the ships are sailing. So the ship will plot an itinerary or they will, they'll create the routes and they'll send it over to us for us to triple check, if you will. Of course, the captain is the, the approval of the routes, but we always like to go over it, making sure the ships are actually safe. And that's one of the tasks that we do over here. We issue new certificates, so we are in touch with what we call flag state or just in touch with the navigation officers. If they have any questions, if they have any issues with the bridge equipment, it all comes through us. There's there are so many items that we do on a daily basis. It's really difficult to explain exactly. Oh, you know what did you do yesterday? Uh, you know, it just it it comes and goes basically. But yeah, we are the the the, the shore contact for the navigation officers, for the chief officers, um, for staff captains. If they have any issues on board, they'll come directly to us, and then we will deal with whatever issues we have. Absolutely. I mean, it is. It's such a complex operation. And as you say, it's it's a partnership. It's a team effort to bring everything together. You mentioned there, obviously, one of the key things that you work closely with, partnering with the, the shipboard captains, are the routes, the different itineraries. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, some of those things that come into consideration when you're looking where to take our ships and maybe even visiting some of our newer destinations as well. Well, I am not involved in itinerary planning that is uh, done by someone in the UK office. Um, once they're done with the itinerary planning, it will go to the ship, they will create the actual routes, and then it will come to us for the review process. So it, it is a circle, right? It's being planned, goes to the ship, it comes to us. If I see any issues, then I'll go back to the UK office and then we'll have a discussion about it. Um, but it is a continuous loop or continuous circle of, of checking all these data. No, that's awesome. And I'm I'm fairly certain that you've been within the cruising industry now for around about 15 years or so. So tell me a little bit about what brought you into this industry, how you got started and how your career has evolved over, over the years. I grew up in Holland. I went to Maritime Academy in Holland. And then when I was a cadet, I had to pick a career. Do you want to work on cargo ships? Do you want to work on cruise ships? Of course, I picked the option to work on the cruise ship. It's a better work life, if you will. <laughs> um, so I worked with a, a different cruise company for about five years. 
I left them in 2015 and then I worked for a, on a yacht for about a year in Fort Lauderdale. So at some point I was like, I have to go back to a cruise ship career. Um, and at that time, it was in 2016, there was an opening for Disney Cruise Line. And well, Disney is known for the great perks and everything that comes with it. So I applied and literally a day later, I got a phone call for an interview. And I have been here since then. I've been here since December 2016. That's amazing. And and you started out on board um, before transitioning, obviously, to our shoreside team. So what positions did you do while you worked out at sea? I started as a first officer. And in 2022, I did a step up to safety officer for a contract. And then I was asked to go to Disney Wish as the first team on board with guests. Um, so, and that was my last contract. So the, the first sailings of the Disney Wish was my last contract on board the ships. And that's when I transitioned shoreside. That's wonderful. You mentioned previously one of the things that brought you to Disney were some of the wonderful perks. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Maybe what what really kind of guided you to come and apply for Disney Cruise Line? Ooh, um, that's a that's a hard question. It comes with so many things. Uh, I mean, the balance of being on board and on vacation, we have what we call a 10-10 rotation. So you're on board for 10 weeks and then you're off for 10 weeks. Other cruise companies don't really follow that quite yet. We are very strict in the planning of our officers. We know quite in advance which ship you're going to, when is your vacation, when are you coming back on board. Uh, with my previous company, they could literally call you a week in advance saying, hey, you need to go back on board. And then four months from now, at some point, you might get off. We don't really do that. We are very structured. Of course, there's always the instance when we have to call someone because there's an emergency. It happens, but not on a regular basis. And that's one of the things that really attracted me with Disney Cruise Line, the steadiness. No, that's wonderful. And obviously, seven years you've been here now, which is an incredible achievement. So congratulations on that. What would you say has been one of the key reasons that's kept you coming back and staying with the company for this long so far? The perks definitely help, but also the environment you work in, right? Especially here in, in the office mindset, we have people from the UK, if people from the US, various kind of people. And it's great to work with everyone. Yeah, we love that diverse culture. And I mean, you know, you said yourself, you're from Holland. Me and myself, I'm from the UK. We both worked out at sea for a long period of time. And I think that's the wonderful thing is just really bringing people from all different cultures and from all different parts of the globe to work in this amazing like environment where everyone just works in harmony with one another, which is incredible. I would love for you now, Dave, to tell me a little bit about your work engaging with cadets by attending maritime academies in the US and around the world. I was contacted by recruiting a couple months ago, and I know that we had been involved previously with going to these US maritime colleges to, to speak with cadets. And they asked me if I wanted to come along with them. I was like, absolutely. They wanted me to, to speak in front of a classroom, just a little bit about the ship or the environment, what our different roles do on board, um, to get a recruiting. And, and that was a great experience. Right, that's what that's where it all starts. It starts in those maritime academies, and that's where I started myself. So it is great to go back there and actually tell them you, what can you expect in this working environment on board a ship. What are the things that you need to complete now in your maritime academy for us to look at you and say, "Hey, you are a perfect candidate to start on board one of our cruise ships." So with that, then, Dave, I'd love to understand what got you into nautical operations, like. Why did you decide to pursue a career in this field? So choosing your career in Holland, you have to do at a very early age, um, the age of 11, 12 years old. So I was, when I was 11 years old, I was at something called Sea Scouts. So on every Saturday, you'll be sailing on lakes uh, with little sailboats with a bunch of other kids. Um, so I always had something going on with water. I had my own sailboat. My parents always had speedboats. So I was always on the water, engaged on water, doing things out there. And then, like I said, when you're 11, 12 years old, you have to pick a career. So all these schools, they will do an open house and you can go around and look what they're doing. So there was this one school, which was is the, uh, the maritime school. They would do knot tying classes as an open house. They would do uh, rowing as an open house. They have actual ships you could look on as an open house. And I was like, this is it. This is where I want to go to school. Now, this school was about an hour drive from my parents' house back then. 
what this school also had is they had an actual dorm on top of the school. So it got you used to living together in a small environment, just like on a ship. So what's it, at the age of 12 years, I basically moved out from Monday through Friday. And then in the weekends, I went back home. And that's what begun, got me into being on ships. Now, when I graduated from this school in the summer, I wanted to do something. So I worked on a cargo ship, which was going from Rotterdam to Antwerp. And that's what this school was for, to getting you work on what we call inland waterway ships. And I did that for a summer vacation. And I was like, yeah, this is not it. This is, this is not what I want to do. It's too small. <laughs> and that's from there, I went to the Maritime Academy to work on bigger ships. Wonderful. And... You know, it is such a, a booming industry and there's so much interest in joining, you know, the cruising industry, specifically Disney Cruise Line, specifically within our marine and technical operations as well. So what advice would you give to somebody that is starting out their career in this industry? Maybe some of our cadets that are now looking to join the maritime industry, maybe even specifically coming to join us at Disney Cruise Line. What advice would you give? study for those exams when you come up to your finals and you're studying either your u.s coast guard exams or wherever you are in the world study for those understand them and don't think oh the passing score is a 6.5 that's why i need to score always try to achieve the highest score you can get the moment you come in front of me and i will do an interview with you i will know if you have studied those exams or not and if you actually understand them as well Always try to achieve the highest standard because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for anyone who is trying to achieve new goals in their life. No, that's great advice. Absolutely. Study, study, study. And what are some of the challenges maybe you faced when you started out your career, aside from moving away from home at the age of 12? Same thing, studying, getting ready for all these different exams. And, and we had a lot back then. We What we did back then was actually... A, a, kind of different career path that you don't see much in the US. We studied for both being a deck officer and an engineering officer on the ship. So you're doing both studies at the same time. So you had to spend some time on knowing collision regulations, but at the same time, you also had to spend some time knowing any everything about an engine room, which is definitely something that keeps it interesting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just, like I said, so much for you to learn and take in. And I'm right in saying that the studies don't just stop when you get on board, right? You you have to continue doing your training and continue passing courses. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. When you come on or when you're a cadet and you get licensed, you get a, a license to go up to a certain rank. Um, you need seat time, extra exams. You need to renew some of your certificates every so often. So there's always a continuous study uh, for us, for instance, when we were transferring to the Disney Wish. We had to get what we call an IGF certificate to be able to sail on a ship that bunkers uh, LNG, liquefied natural gas. Understood. And obviously, I mean, Disney Cruise Line right now is is in such a wonderful time in, in uh, our growth. You know, as you mentioned, you were a part of the Disney Wish uh, when she opened. We're getting ready for the Disney Treasure soon. Um, then obviously just around the corner, the adventure, the destiny. And, you know, now's a great time to really, you know, start paying attention, invest in your time. If you are looking to build a career with Disney Cruise Line, would you say so? We're doing nonstop interviews at the moment. <laughs> Incredible. I mean, you've got so much coming your way, right? And and also the opportunity for promotion. You've said yourself, you know, when you started out working out at sea, you started in one role, you progressed up to, you know, stepping into the TA safety officer role, and then you obviously came and joined the shoreside team. So tell me a little bit about the opportunity for growth and promotion within your own personal career. Uh, well, like you said, you know, adding more ships will add more roles here in the Shoreside team. So with the Disney Wish, they needed additional support here in the office. So when the position opened up, the first thing I did is apply. <laughs> um, I was already living over here, so it was a, a pretty easy transition for me. I, I was familiar with the, the people working in the office as well. So for me, it just made sense. Um, I've already said for a couple of years, I wanted to move out of the shipboard role and move to a shore set position, just because there's so much, so many opportunities here. 
And, and like I said earlier, if you ask me on a daily basis, what do I do? It is so much. I would need to write a book. It's very diverse what we do here. Yeah. But what would you say are some of those challenges that you faced in your role and how have you maybe overcome them? I think the biggest challenge coming from a shipboard role to a shoreside role is that everything is much slower here. On the ship, if something happens, everyone's running around, we got to sort it out and then we continue. Here, you send an email now and then, you know, hopefully within the next 24 hours, you will get a reply. Um, if not, we'll, we get it within the next week or so. <laughs> so it's a much more slower environment. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of maybe some of those projects that you've worked on, which you say have been some of your, your favorites to work on, if any? All the projects I do are my favorite projects just because they're they're fun projects. So Lighthouse Point, we just opened it up. That was one of the projects that I was working on. We installed a current meter, so it measures the current underwater. So when the ship docks, you know exactly if the ship being being pushed towards the dock, it's being set away from the dock. So that was an interesting project to work on. We installed the same installation at Castaway, which is an interesting project. Right now. Uh, myself and my team are working on a project on every single ship to enhance fuel data that we need to report. Wow. Some amazing projects that you're working on there. And you mentioned Lighthouse Point, which is so exciting. I've seen some incredible images. I can't wait to get out there. Did you get the chance to go out there and see it yourself and see it when the guests had arrived? I've been there before it opened up. I haven't been there since opening up, but I'm excited to go back there. Amazing. It's it's incredible to think how far Disney Cruise Line has come. You know, you mentioned, obviously, you have been in this industry now for about 15 years. You've worked with other companies um, other than Disney Cruise Line as well. But what, what keeps you coming back to Disney? What sets Disney apart from anywhere? I mean, you could work with any company. So why Disney? I, th- I think it's the company values that matter most as well. And of course, it, it's not just one thing. It is a variety of aspects. Like I mentioned before, the people you work with, the perks you get, the, the good medical coverage you get, the company values, always trying to improve something. <clears throat> with this company, if I have an idea, we can actually discuss the, this idea, open it up, um, give it some thought, and see if we can actually make it work. I feel with other companies, you don't always necessarily get that same path. You have an idea, maybe someone else will take over your idea and they will run away with it or they say, no, it's not going to work with us. We don't do things here like that. You get an idea, let's open it up. Let's let's talk about it. Can we do something with this? Can we enhance the ships with this idea? We're always thinking about the future. I love that. That's great. And uh, if you can share anything, and you may not be able to, what are some of the projects that you're working on now that you're excited for in the future? Well, we have the treasure coming out, the adventure coming out, and the destiny. And we're, of course, we, we, we're not new build, we're operations, but we are in touch with the new build team. And we're always touching base on, hey, can we improve this? Can we improve that? And I can tell you the new ships coming out, they're going to be amazing. Well, Dave, I have to say, it's been great getting to speak to you, understand a little bit more about your career and obviously, you know, how we're looking to the future as well. And like I said, there's so much growth coming to Disney Cruise Line. Now's a great time to be a part of this amazing company, especially if you're looking to grow your career as well. Before we finish, though, something I do like to do in our podcast is a little Fab Five favorites. Of course, Disney have their own Fab Five, um, but I like to have my own little Fab Five favorite questions. So these are very Disney questions. They're very easy, Um, but here we go. So number one for you, Dave, is your favorite Disney character. Oh, does global Disney or very specific to animated? Oh, no, you can go global with it. Oh, Tony Stark. That's my absolute favorite. Very cool. Awesome. All (laughs) right. Favorite Disney movie? You know, it has to be one of the Marvel movies or one of the Star Wars. I'm going to go with... I mean, Iron Man, I said Tony Stark earlier, Iron Man, I, you know, you can play those continuously for me and I will watch them. Yeah, I, I tell you what, it's been great that we've got these new franchises among our umbrella now. It's incredible. Awesome, awesome. Okay, this is one, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this one, but I'm going to give it a try. Do you have a favorite Disney song? Actually, I do. <laughs> oh, yes. Give it to me, Dave, go. You're welcome. 
for Moana. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> so are you excited for Moana too? That's coming out later this year then? I am. I haven't watched the trailers yet, which I guess I need to, but yes. Yes. It's looking awesome. It's going to be great. Okay, here we go. Final two questions. So number four, favorite port of call? Santorini in Greece. Oh, yes. I, you know what? An amazing destination. I would agree with you with that one. And then final question, favorite ship? Oh. I know it's like choosing your favorite child. I think the Disney fantasy is my favorite. Disney fantasy. Okay. I love that. Well, Dave, thank you so much for answering those. That was incredible. And I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. I know you're a busy man. You've got lots going on, um, but it really has been great to chat with you today. So thank you for your time. Anytime. I, I, this was great. I love to be here.